Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 8th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's probably hard to find a device these days, mobile or not mobile, that doesn't have some kind of Bluetooth functionality. Mobile phones, cars, PCs, uh, pretty much any computing device and non-computing device has Bluetooth in some uh, variation evolved. Also, the standard itself is still evolving. Yi Ching, who is uh, our handler in Singapore and also part of a research group that looks into Bluetooth uh, flaws, has now looked at some of the historic trends as far as vulnerabilities go in uh, Bluetooth devices. And well, the trend doesn't look good. For the last four years, we pretty much had around 100 new vulnerabilities each year as far as Bluetooth is concerned. And this is significantly up from prior years. Luckily, it seems to have leveled out like these last four years, so it doesn't seem to be really going up uh, anymore. But still, Bluetooth is one of those protocols that probably will keep on giving as far as vulnerabilities are concerned. The classic dangerous pattern here is that we have a fairly complex protocol and a very power-limited implementation Bluetooth uh, implementations are typically created based on that they are using as little power as possible, which of course means that you don't really have a lot of overhead to do additional input validation and the like. And then we got an update for OpenSSL. Uh, now, uh, this affects OpenSL 3.0.1.1 as well as 1.0.2, and it fixes uh, two vulnerabilities. One is a side channel vulnerability. This is timing based, so by essentially observing how long it takes uh, to uh, decrypt something, an attacker uh, may be able uh, to recover uh, plain text. And this apparently uh, works across the network now uh, to find practical exploits of uh, these timing uh, vulnerabilities across the network tends to be uh, pretty difficult. So won't really rate this as sort of a patch now issue. Second uh, vulnerability here looks a little bit more interesting. CVE 2022-4203. It's a read buffer overrun and it could lead to memory leaks. Sort of an interesting issue here in that essentially what it evolves around is a malformed CRL uh, certificate revocation list uh, URL. Now you may say, okay, you know, how is an attacker going to exploit this well apparently the exploit can be triggered before the certificate is signature is actually uh, verified so an attacker basically could trick you to go to a malicious uh, website present a malicious certificate and uh, then exploit this i think this would be a way sort of how uh, this could be exploited i don't really see sort of an obvious way to exploit this against servers unless you have uh, cases where users authenticate uh, with uh, certificates but that's not really all that terribly uh, common so interesting vulnerabilities patch them as patches become available they rate them as high not as uh, critical wouldn't really rush it out, just follow your standard uh, patch cycle. And then some updates for users of uh, Go Anywhere MFT. Uh, this is uh, the file transfer solution that has uh, been exploited uh, this last uh, week or so. Uh, first of all, yes, there is now a public proof of concept exploit available before it had been exploited, but the exploit itself had sort of not been made public. Secondly, there is now a vulnerability, at least I believe there is. In order to really figure this out, you have to set up an account with the Fortra portal to then check if there is a patch available for you. Well, uh, you know, patching is too easy anyway, so that's why they throw a little bit an extra twist into it. And given all the attention uh, that we give uh, OneNote uh, recently, uh, well, a uh, QuarkBot is now apparently being distributed uh, via malicious OneNote notebooks, at least according to a report by uh, Sophos. Remember, we did have a diary a couple days ago uh, with uh, 
tips about how to detect uh, OneNote and also how to detect malicious uh, payloads within OneNote notebooks. And I mentioned uh, yesterday that we are looking uh, for scams around the earthquake in Turkey and uh, Syria. Not a ton of this out there. There are some reports of spam uh, that uh, sort of solicits donations to crypto coin addresses. Haven't seen them personally yet. I've seen a couple on uh, Twitter where they advertise uh, crypto coin addresses for donations and I doubt they are legit and also uh, some sort of scams probably because it involves NFTs where uh, people uh, promise that if you're buying their NFTs a certain amount will uh, go uh, to relief efforts. As usual uh, be careful who you're giving your money to. And then I also released the latest and for now the last episode of Packet Tuesday. It has been fun to produce these. Problem is that I started them sort of late last year. I recorded a bunch of them, but since then some of the support I sort of had uh, here at Storm Center uh, no longer exists. So had to uh, cut down on some of the other activities and sadly Packet Tuesday was one of those things. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.